on Twitter. I asked her why she also had backed the campaign. In January, I would spent four months educating myself. I did an anti-Semitism course online, and I decided to use my position as a person in the media and do a podcast with Christian Drew Murphy and speak about it. And at that point, it was like a, a switch was flicked, and the abuse went from a manageable stream of unpleasant messages to a, a barrage. And I now know from this research, from the studies, that this is intentional. It's, there's a small number, a very small number, of targeting individuals who are actually strategic. They're doing this for, for a purpose. And, and they pick their target, and they pick their messaging, and they're trying to cause me to react. Because if I retweet, if someone has, say, 500,000 followers on Twitter, and you retweet a racist message, and 95% of your readers realise and, and say, yes, that's disgusting, that's horrible, I don't like that. That's 5% or 25,000 people who are then able to go and click onto the, the, the link and the profile of the person that sent the abuse. And they might see some of their other messages and think, oh, that's, they've got a point, that's quite interesting, and you're expanding their network. And in terms of, of you personally, what impact did it have, or does it have, when you read that kind of stuff? Because you are getting huge amounts of comments. Um, well, I mean, part of this paper says, you know, I'm not a victim. I don't want to be a victim. And being a victim only encourages it. But since I got pregnant, um, it makes you realise, you know, I, I have a bit of sugar and my baby goes nuts and it's happy. I'm happy. My baby's happy. I had a, a weekend where I got a, a, a horrible amount of trolling. And no matter how much mental strength I have, I still have the adrenaline. I still have that fight or flight. I still have the hormones. And my baby was quiet for a couple of days. So it, it does take its toll, and I did realise at that point, I don't need to read this stuff. If this, if someone said these things to me on the street, I would Busy, what are you doing? or report them. Uh, so there's no reason why I need to get it when I wake up in the morning or I go to bed at night. It just you can isn't move healthy, you now. and I don't want to accidentally help them by sharing their message. Hello, Jack. I the English Channel once. Hello. But an American woman is attempting to do it a record four times non-stop. Why have you got grass on you? <laughs> And she is already almost three quarters of the way through her extraordinary <laughs> challenge. Sarah Thomas, who is 37 and has recently had treatment for breast cancer, is currently swimming towards the French coast on her third lap. This is the, the live tracker which shows where she is now. Four swimmers have previously completed a triple crossing of the world's busiest shipping lane, but no one has so far managed all four. Let's have a look at the weather now. Louise Lear is here. I won't. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not good for it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, what a contrast we had of conditions over the weekend. In fact, across southern England, it was beautiful. Highs of 27 degrees, 81 Fahrenheit. But what a difference a day makes. Just look how much cloud we've seen so far this morning. A little bit of light, patchy drizzle around as well. And that is all courtesy yes. of this weather front. It's sinking it's good. steadily southwards and high pressure is building you want to up behind. So a good deal of quiet you want to weather for some of us and yeah. contrasting weather conditions further north. Actually, that's where most of the sunshine's been. Northern England, southern Scotland, Northern Ireland. Yes, some shower cloud up into the far northwest and a brisk northwesterly wind driving Come some on, showers into the northern Ireland. <gasps> But southern Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern, Northern England, you'll keep some sunshine throughout the afternoon. Uh, it's a brave boy. To the south and what a difference the temperatures are making. Yeah. 20 degrees the maximum here. Now that uh, weather front so slowly meanders its way south and clears the country. And that means boy. the skies will clear as well through the night. So temperatures are going to fall away widely into single figures first thing tomorrow morning. Maybe even low single figures in a few rural areas. So there'll also be a little bit of patchy mist and fog around. So quite an autumnal feel to the morning, a little murky on the chilly side. But that all lifts away, and actually tomorrow is forward, really. Dry, settled with some sweet smells oh, coming through. Okay. Still a naggy south in the far north of Scotland, and some thickening clouds in the west by the end of the day. But drop temperatures 12. Riding plains down considerably. Across the top of that high, we'll see some light patchy rain moving into the far north of Scotland. Elsewhere, though, again, we stay fairly straightforward. I can put my feet up this week. Dry, settled highs again of around 12 to 20 degrees. So that's the trend as we start off this week. It looks as